anytime I hear a lot of confusion, I like to clear it up because I'm nothing if not logical. Um, two things apparently confuse people. I see it mentioned, and I see it uh, on the uh, the boards where the hissing cockroaches hang out. Um, two things I never said. I never said that if a lens has low element count, that it is therefore necessitatively good. I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Simplicity is divinity. A prime lens is divine. A good one is divine for a reason. Many reasons, however. Um, but I have never at any point in time said that a lens necessitatively is an awesome lens if it is a low element. Bad lens design is bad lens design. So I've never like jumped for joy. It's like, oh, you know, that lens must be great. It's got a low element count. I've never implied such a thing. I've never said such a thing. Uh, yeah. So that's point number one. Point number two, and I've been saying this since day one. Now I don't have my computer on, but there's a link below of a chart that I made. But I've been saying this um, since day one. There are three different categories of lenses, and each must be judged within its own criteria. I keep seeing stuff like, oh, that crazy guy, he's, uh, he praises a, a four-element count lens, uh, one minute and the next minute he's praising this high element count uh, Fuji 16 millimeter which I have I named it lens of the year along with um, a couple other lenses and uh, yeah that's a high element count lens you see the point that they're missing is that is a 16 millimeter three different categories of lenses each which fall within their own criteria because you know you you just cannot like have an Olympics and like judge midgets along with like tall um, runners from, uh, you know, uh, Zaire or something, you know, you can't have like a race and judge them on equal grounds, you know, it's like, we got five midgets and five uh, tall, seven foot tall guys from Zaire and we're going to have a, a hundred meter sprint, you know, <laughs> we can't judge on the same curve. Those three different categories are um, prime lenses, below 28 millimeters basically starting at 24 millimeters and below they are their own group the one thing that has improved in lens design in uh, the past 20 years are ultra wide primes and also uh, ultra zooms those have improved obviously we have image stabilization obviously we have a much faster autofocus tracking like this one has uh, linear motors in them like the 90 millimeter has a quad linear motors very fast autofocus tracking those are improvements but that's a different set of criteria um, lenses 28 millimeters all the way through 600 mm those are prime lenses I should said prime lenses between 28 millimeters and uh, 600 millimeters plus and obviously zoom lenses so we have two different groups of prime lenses uh, everything 24 millimeters and below and everything 28 millimeters and above so there is absolutely zero inherent contradiction in me praising a high element count prime lens if that lens is 24 millimeters or less I highly praise the 24 millimeter 1.8 G Nikkor 20 millimeter 1.8 G Nikkor Awesome lenses from Nikon. Plastic body lenses, they are assembled in Japan. Nevertheless, even Zeiss has nothing close to it. Zeiss is 21. Zeiss makes horrible ultra wide lenses, by the way. Horrible. High quality, horrible lenses, though. Too much vignetting, too much chromatica, too much, too much of everything bad. They're just no dice. I'll never buy an ultra wide Zeiss. Zeiss never learned how to make an ultra wide lens. They should take hints from Nikon. Nikon dominates the ultra wide lenses. Far more so than Canon. Far more so than uh, anybody else. Fuji, however, really dominates the 16. They must have taken some of the secrets of uh, Nikon and incorporated them into the production of their 16 millimeter. So, those are two things that people think are contradictory that are absolutely not contradictory. I've been completely consistent since day one on that. The logic behind it, the sensibility, the reasoning behind it is 100% valid. Okay, Just because it's a low element count prime lens doesn't mean anything. You know? So, yeah, it's like, there's a lot of simplex stuff in life. It's like, well, that thing, uh, that widget's only got four parts in it. So what? It's a piece of crap, you know? 
you go to the dollar store, you can find a lot of really simple things that may have only two or three parts. It's like, yeah, this is cheap plastic crap made in China. Yeah, it's a piece of junk. It's a junk lens. It's a piece of junk, period. So, that has no bearing on anything. I don't judge a lens by element count. Do not. Is that one of the factoring criteria that makes up a divine prime lens if it is awesome? Sure it is. And there is certainly no contradiction in me praising a relatively high element count ultra-wide lens, 24 millimeters or wider. That is a different criteria set of lenses to get that awesome uh, lack of distortion, lack of vignetting, uh, great rendering of the actual image. You have to make compromise. You have to make compromises with the Tamron 15 to 30. You know, it's a high element count. That was I named that uh, zoom lens or lens of the year last year. The Tamron 15 to 30 is just the tits. It's incredible. It's better than the Nikkor 14 to 24, which I also happen to have. No contradiction. It's not only is it a zoom lens, it's an ultra wide zoom lens. It is within its own criteria of judgment. Okay? All lens design is a trade off. I cannot judge a low element uh, count versus high element count uh, ultra wide lens. The old uh, uh, ultra wide lenses, 24 millimeters and lower, and they exist like Nikkor AI and AIS lenses. There are only a couple of them that are good. The rest of them suck. To perfect ultra-wide prime lenses, they are complex by their very nature. A spherical ED elements, multiple uh, elements, a high element count lens. So, no contradiction. The chart is below on the one thing. I've been completely consistent on all of this since day one. Anybody that thinks they see a contradiction or a misreasoning has an issue intellectually where they're not understanding what I'm saying, or maybe they didn't catch me talking about it for the upteenth thousandth time, but I have. So, that's that, girlfriend. Okay? Bye.